you don't need that here. Oh, you do need it. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to drink it. All right. Okay. Sound unknown. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. Thank you, ReflexFest. Thank you, Christina, for arranging to change my slot so I can uh, be on time for my flight. Thank you, Stylianos, uh, for organizing this amazing event. And today's presentation is about blockchain beyond tech, real life use cases in real life. But before I jump to the real life cases we have on VeChain, some of the most amazing that are coming from blockchain, uh, I would like to start with of what is blockchain. So every time they are asking me what I'm doing for a living, I'm telling them I'm working for a blockchain company. And they're telling me, what is blockchain? And then I ask them back, do you know what is Bitcoin? They tell me, yeah, we own some Bitcoin. And then I ask them, okay, do you know also Ethereum? Yeah, we know also Ethereum. And we have also some uh, VeChain, VET, some Dogecoin, some Cardano. So I'm telling them, wow, so you're owning cryptocurrency but you don't know the technology underlying these cryptocurrencies, which is the blockchain. So today I was thinking to explain what is blockchain in a more technical way, discuss about proof of work, proof of stake, uh, proof of authority, block finality, validators and nodes. And then I realized that if you want to achieve mass adoption, we should go more into practical and less into technicality. It's like the email. When you send an email, you just press send and receive. You don't know what is the protocol be below it, right? No, you just use it. So today, I'm going to explain what is blockchain in a very specific and practical scenario. In the scenario of love. Okay, now you can laugh a bit. It's about love, we're talking about love now. Like, I love you. So, uh, in this specific scenario, you're going to say I love you to a girl, yeah? And you say it all alone without any witness. So. This is central system. Why is central system? Because at any time, I can withdraw from this statement. I can deny that I said this statement. I can lie about it. And this is how a central system works. And if I want to say I love you to some girl, and I want to say it in front of a witness, let's say a friend of mine, this is called a central system with a backup. Because if I want to deny from it, uh, about this statement and lie about it, I need to convince also my friend to lie with me, for me. And this is how central system with a backup works. Now, if I say I love you to a girl with random multiple witnesses, let's say right now, yeah? I say I love you to a girl and you hear it, yeah? But I don't know you people all, yeah? So if I want to withdraw from this statement, you can prove me wrong because you can say, no, Dimitris, you said I love you to that girl at that time, at that date, and you cannot deny it. And this is how blockchain works. It's all about the integrity, the security, the validity, the immutability of the data. Having that said, I want to discuss a bit more about VeChain. What is VeChain? VeChain was founded back in 2015. And we're building solutions since then for amazing clients like BMW, Givenchy from the LVMH group, with amazing partners, big partners like DNV, PwC, Deloitte, Grand Thornton Cyprus. And all of them have chosen VeChain for a specific reason. And that reason is Toolchain. And Toolchain is all about building a solution without even need to know how to develop it. So Toolchain is a SaaS solution which means you develop the solution without really doing the actual development. You don't touch the crypto, you don't touch the smart contract. It's really happening everything on the back end. And that simplifies the onboarding of companies, which is very important because when I joined VeChain back in the days, they were telling me, Dimitris, we understand what is blockchain, uh, what is about, what is the value, but how we can justify the use of crypto in our legal, in our accounting department? And that we have a solution about that in VeChain. It's called Toolchain, because you don't need to worry about the use of crypto, because everything, as I said, happening on the back end. Having that said, we have more than 70 live cases, more than 300 uh, uh, proof of concept, covering more than 20 industries and 42 sub-industries. The first use case I want to discuss about is Walmart China. Walmart China, the solution we built it along with our partner, PwC China, and it's about knowing your product. We have heard about 
knowing your uh, customer, right? But what about knowing your uh, product? What about the consumer engagement with the product? How can you be sure that what you are eating, what you are buying is, fr is fresh coming from that supplier? That is the solution we have built about Walmart. It's a B2C, but also a B2B. So it's also a business to business. Why? Because Walmart is also monitoring the best suppliers, suppliers incentivize them to promote and bring the best, uh, uh, the, the, the best goods on, right on the sh shelf. So when a consumer buys a product, they can scan the QR code and find everything about the life cycle of the product that they're buying, at which temperature, at which logistic it was transferred, and when it was put on shelf. Let's go back. Okay, perfect. You can see. All right. This is one of the most favorite use cases because it was one of the first use cases I work with. It was built by DNB. In DNB, they are experts in, in certification and classification, more than 150 years. And why I like it is because for first time in history, a bottle of wine is more than just a bottle of wine, because right on the back of the uh, bottle, you can see a QR code. And when you scan, you can find everything about the wine. When I say everything, I mean everything, from the genesis part of the wine, which is from the vineyard, up to the bottling and distribution. And what is most amazing about it is the fact that this information, before it reaches on the blockchain, it has been audited, it has been certified by DNV. Therefore, if you consider that blockchain is a single source of truth, Imagine the data we put on the blockchain, which is audited. That is the extra value of the digital assurance services brought by DNV. And it's called My Story. And My Story has been expanded also to olive oil, to uh, tomato, to cheese, even into fashion industry, which brings me to the next use case of H&M. This use case is about sustainability fashion. Buying a new garment that is made based on used clothes, when I mean used clothes, that there is a collection point from H&M, from used clothes that have been audited by DNV and reaching up to the production. So when a customer, when a client of H&M buys a specific garment, they can scan the QR code and find out how it was created using all clothes. And that is the beauty about it, because as I said, it is audited. So you can trust what you are buying, it's real. Uh, and we went black. All right, there we go. Another use case, again brought by DNV, it's my care. Right now in Europe, even in Cyprus, we are using the safe pass. What is the safe pass about? It's to show that there are people, the people have been vaccinated, have been gone through uh, recovery of COVID-19, or have been tested. But what about the premises we are visiting? What about the restaurants? What about the hotels we are visiting? How can we trust them that they took all the necessary steps in order to mitigate the risk of infection? Would you, uh, I mean, who wouldn't like such a solution in order? How can you trust when you're visiting a place that it has been taking all these necessary steps? This is what is my care about, again, brought by DNV, because DNV has audited the places, has uh, seen that these places have taken all the necessary steps and give them a batch. So when you enter a hotel, a restaurant, any premise that has this batch, you know you enter in a safe manner. So it's not only about, um, for example, the people that are entering, but also anyone that uh, they want to enter. All right, since we talk about COVID-19, let's talk about the digital COVID-19 verification mechanism. A solution we gave to the Cyprus government back in 2020, 6th of May. Unfortunately, it was not built in Cyprus, but built in San Marino. Uh, why I say this? Because we see in Europe a lot of fake certificates, COVID-19 fake certificates, but not only in, Cy in Europe, but also around the world. With this solution, you don't need to worry about it. That's why San Marino is the only country with zero fake certificates for COVID-19. Why is that? It's because all the certificates, all the mechanisms, when you upload the data, have been audited by DNV. On top of it, there is a universal QR code. So anyone can read the QR code. You don't need any specific uh, pistol uh, or any scanner to read the QR code. 
And that is all built on VeChain blockchain, and it's GDPR compliant. The first solution about health records that is GDPR compliant and built on a public blockchain. And since we are talking about healthcare, let's talk about a use case here in Cyprus. A use case that was brought by Mediterranean Hospital of Cyprus and Areteo Hospital, that which is about the medical records. When we built it, this uh, solution, we built it with a Cyprus startup that is Aidante. Aidante is based in Limassol, by the way, if you want to visit them. So it's about the trust, how you can be sure that your medical record has been your medical record. What do I mean by that? We believe that hospitals, wait for it, because I want you to see that, are storing your medical records as trustees. When I say as trustees, mean that they are the legal owners, but the real beneficial owner are the citizens. So in GHS right now, any medical practitioner that have your information can enter your medical record, unauthorized. We don't know what they're doing with their med your medical records, and nobody's doing anything about that, except Mediterranean Hospital and Aredeo Hospital. Because we have built a system, a solution, the healthcare wallet, the EH cert, which means that if a medical practitioner wants to view your medical record, they need to request access on it and you have the discretion to give access or not. This relationship of requesting and granting access, it is then underpin on the blockchain. That brings trust, transparency between medical practitioners, hospitals, and patients. On top of it, we build something powerful, but also something beautiful. We combine programmers from Instagram, but also developers from blockchain to bring the most beautiful, the most powerful application for the healthcare. And it is patented. At the same time, we provide data analytics in an understandable manner, so we promote the well-being. All powered on VeChain toolchain. Okay, and this is about NFTs. NFTs, it is actually a very popular term right now. Nowadays, in the crypto blockchain sphere, it is non-fungible tokens. It's about registering the ownership of a digital item, digital art, anything associated with a person, with a wallet on the blockchain. But what is the real value? I mean, there is a discussion, there is the dilemma. I mean, anyone can right-click a JPEG and save it on their computer. How you can enforce such a right in the court of law? So the answer is, connecting the digital with the physical, and is known as digital. Imagine bringing the two worlds together. Oh, sorry about that. What I mean bringing the two worlds together, creating a digital twin of a physical item. Imagine your behavior in real life also um, be combined on the digital. Incentivize, for example, recycling, and you get um, uh, rewards on your NFT. How amazing is that? Your behavior to be also reflected on the digital and vice versa. <laughs> Having that said, let me sum up about VeChain. As I said, we have more than 1,000 clients, more than 300 projects on the pipeline, more than 70 projects live right now on the VeChain blockchain. And the reason for that, as I said, is the VeChain toolchain. Thank you very much, everyone that came here during lunchtime to hear me out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me or contact me on my email. I don't know if you see it there. Uh, yeah, OK, it's on, off. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, can I take some questions, Christina? Uh, yes, absolutely. Actually, do you want to tell us your email address yeah. if anyone's interested? My email address is dim dot neocleus with a c at vchain.org. One second. Let me have you over there. There, you go. there we go. So thank you, everyone. So do we have time for a few questions? Uh, I just need the uh, Christina to give me a nod. Yes? OK, so we do have some, some time. If you want to ask a question, there's already one up there. If you want to ask any questions, go to slido.com. Use the code reflectfest and choose the old port.
Don't worry about the black screen. It's all oh, part oh, of the show. It's all part of the show. And there we go. The question started. So let, let's go for the first one. Which industries are more challenging in terms of blockchain adoption? Adaption. Uh, okay. Adaptation. I Third time lucky. I will say the most challenging industry we faced was the industry of healthcare because um, we had also the GDPR involved there, so we needed to do something engineering on the back end, some zero knowledge proof, some, so we didn't directly send information on the blockchain, so we did some anonymization, zero knowledge proof, so it was the most challenging industry we have faced. But also all industries can be challenging, especially when there are Multi, multiple uh, stakeholders that they, do want, they don't want to share the information or they want to share, they want to lie on the sharing of information. That's why we need uh, an auditor there to audit the information before it goes on the blockchain. Because uh, you can put anything on the blockchain. How can you be certain that it's uh, a true statement? That's why we are working with DNV, PwC, Deloitte, Grant Thornton in order to bring these assurance services on top of the blockchain. Which one do you want to take? Okay. I, I don't want to choose a dangerous one for you, so I don't know. This one? Ah, I'm going to take the last okay, one. Okay, so what it means for VeChain to crack down from China? Okay, uh, China banned the cryptocurrencies, but we need to understand what is banning in a very broad way. What I mean broad way, it is, for example, they banned the cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, etc. But Bitcoin, etc., it's mainly associated with financial transactions. Uh, but VeChain, as you can see, we talk about Walmart China, we have a lot of hotels in China that have been uh, using MyCare. It means that they haven't banned the blockchain technology. So VeChain doesn't stand for financial transaction per se, but stands for technology transactions. So that is what we should keep from the crackdown. We, China, they are very pragmatic. They are not really on the FOMO, they are not really onto the financial derivatives or even to the printing of money like US does. So they are more into real value. That's why VeChain is still there. That's why they are building on VeChain. I think also a big logistics company is coming out uh, today that they are using VeChain and this in China. And, and I, I have to ask, are we, should we worry about what happens in China for the rest of us in the world? Well, we see that the U.S. now, they are ready to um, adopt more cryptocurrency. Even the SEC said that we should regulate it, that we have no intention to ban it. So the Western world should not be worried about what China does. I mean, China has, has always had their own way of working. I mean, the Western world was more about the financial. China is more about the exports. If we can see that, we can see how we can combine these two worlds. So we take a few more. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to answer? Right. Let's see. Let's see. I, let's see. How about what are the future plans for VeChain? Uh, you skip that one. I want one. to okay. go for the first one because it's very tricky. What happens if a doctor needs urgent access to medical records? Okay, we have of course the emergency trigger that can bypass uh, through a smart contract the immediate access for a doctor, and that access then it is underpinned on the blockchain. It's so the time stamping with the proof that it was for emergency. So we have figured it out all out, every scenario. So don't worry about that. Um, all right, future plans for VeChain. Uh, we're expanding. I mean, right now after this event, I'm, tr I'm traveling to Milan because we have a big customer there that needs to see us. And Vienna? Uh, and Vienna, of see, course. See, I remember your travel plans. Uh, just for an hour and then I'm done <laughs> traveling to Milan, so you can see that. Um, How is your token utilized among your projects? Okay, that is a very nice question. So we have the native token, which is the VET, and also that creates the VTOR. The VTOR is the one that is used to fuel the smart contract. As I said, you don't need to worry about the fueling of the smart contracts and the gas fee, because if you're using the tool chain, all that is taken care of on the back end. Um, which industry, we said that. How did NFTs become so popular? Um, all right, NFTs have been here for a long time. We, I don't know if you remember CryptoKitties. Now they have different name. Uh, so it, it's always about a trend. Uh, also the gamification of NFT, NFT some projects like Axis there. Uh, 
Uh, also communities are building on top of it. Coinbase is launching soon the NFT marketplace. So it's the trend that is taking the NFTs other than the technology. But we need to see beyond the trend. We need to see the real value of the NFTs. I mean, if I see something that is digital item, and as I said earlier, you can just right click and save it, what is the real value? So we need to find a way to combine the digital item with the physical item. That's why I said the digital is the way to go and not just digital. Because right now, it's important to understand that there is population that will never be under understanding what is digital. I mean, I remember when I was in the airport, um, there were people, elder people, they didn't know what is a PLF. So we have a noble obligation to respect the transition period. You cannot jump from A to Z immediately. We have the noble obligation to see all the letters in the alphabet in order to make a smooth transition for all the population. So because we've mentioned NFTs a few times, and I'm, I'm sure some people you know, are, are involved in NFTs, but can I just give you a basic example to explain it better? Mm -hmm. If, let's say, I'm an artist or a musician uh, or a comedian, and I have a joke, any, any of the artists, and I have a really nice photo or, or, or an image, a digital image, and I want to sell it, and I want to make millions, and I want to buy my Lamborghini, what do you advise me to do? Or anyone up in here to do? Don't sell it. Don't sell it. The reason is because you cannot enforce your legal rights in any court of law. That's the problem with NFTs, because at, the, at that moment that you put it online in an auction, anyone can right-click and save it and save it as JPEG. So you are losing immediately. Okay, you can sell, of course, for much uh, sort of value. We saw uh, paintings sold for millions. But immediately you can have users downloading your creation with the right click save, and you have no rights on that because there is no framework for that. There is no legal framework. So I'm calling the regulators to at least regulate the NFTs. It's the easiest thing they can start from. So I'm an artist, I'll do art, I put it on the NFT blockchain, but I don't sell it. And how do I pay my rent at the end of the month? You don't put it. I, I, I don't even put it on, on, on the blockchain? If you want to make fast money, yeah. But if you're an artist, there is a value of the artist, of the yes. creation, of the baby, right? So you don't put it. Unless you don't mind to have multiple users uh, save it as JPEG and not make any money of it. So for the artist side, it's not really a make money quick version. It's just a trend right now. It's, it's, it's a trend. I it's see. just a trend. It's just a phase that um, we have. Okay, back in 2017, we had the moon boys of the ICOs. It's the same thing. It's, it's a cycle. We need to find the real value when it comes to NFTs and the real uses and the real framework in order to protect the artist, but also finding the real value of the art, of the item, of, of the photograph, of anything. Even a tweet has a value. So, uh, so yeah. So thank you for clarifying that because quite a lot of confusion happened on NFTs and people thought, oh, you know, I could just take a photo of something, put it up there and become a millionaire. So you can. No, no, you can. You can. It's, but, it's possible. But I wouldn't suggest it. But you wouldn't suggest it. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's time for us to break for lunch. So I just want to say thank you very much for giving the Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. And, and good luck with VChain. It looks like you've got a fantastic project and it looks like it's going to scale. Thank you and, very much. And it's good that I've got some in my, uh, in my portfolio. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? Well, apparently there's a few people that don't. But I'm sure after this, they'll go and be buying uh, VeChain. Thank you very much. Thank Enjoy the much. rest of your Thank day.